What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com, back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial. So uh, this week I'm going to be starting a series on creating your own style. So one of the things I've been asked is, hey, you've shown us how to pick styles that are built into SketchUp, but how do we actually build our own style, styles that... Um, you know, so that we can set the way that our, that our models look. And, uh, you know, I was going to try to do this all in one video, and it just started getting kind of long, because I really want to get in-depth and really uh, really kind of go through some of the options that SketchUp has for dealing with styles. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So, uh, first thing you're going to want to do is... Um, you access the styles over here in your tray. So, if styles don't show up for whatever reason, you can always go up to Window, Default Tray, and select Styles. And if your tray doesn't show up, just make sure uh, when you go to a default tray, make sure that the tray is turned on. So just click show tray, that'll pop it up over here, and uh, then you can adjust your styles. So this is where your styles are located, um, over on the right-hand side of your screen. And uh, we've gone through this before. Uh, you can come in here and you can change the way that your model looks by selecting these different styles. So, and what we want to do is we want to go ahead and create our own. So, what we're going to go ahead and do is um, we're going to start off and we're just going to create a new style. So, to do that, you're going to come up here and click this Create New Style button. And that's going to pop up a new style. You see how it took Architectural Design? It called it Architectural Design Style 2. So, that's going to be your new style. But let's go ahead and rename that. So, we'll call this TSE Example... We'll call this TSE line example style. A little wordy, but that's okay. So anyway, that's that's going to be our new style. And um, if you can see here, so if you can see here, I was in default styles, then I created that new style. Well, now if you go to in model, that's going to show up in your in model list. Um, and that's great if you just want to keep this in the model, if it's not a style that you want to use in a different model. If you do want to save that, um, to use in the future, what you can do is you can right click on it, click Save As, and then uh, figure out where you want to save your styles. I recommend uh, I recommend creating a folder somewhere, whether it's on a hard drive, um, like an external hard drive, whether it's on your C drive, uh, just somewhere where you can get to it in the future. I've actually created a folder for some style examples, and I put a couple test styles in here. But you're going to go ahead and save that, and it's going to save that as a dot .style file. That's the type of file that these are. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And now that's actually saved on my desktop. So if I or on my uh, hard drive. So now if I come here and if I navigate to this file in my uh, in my hard drive, you can actually see this is in here as a file and it comes up as a style builder document. But basically that is that is now saved as a style or um, as a file external to SketchUp. So, and the cool thing about that now is once you start saving these in a folder, what you can do is you can actually open a collection. So if you click on this little arrow right here and you click either open a, you can click open or create a collection. And if I go in here and I select this folder and I hit select folder, you see it brings in all the styles that are in that folder. So my two test styles and then my example line style. So once you kind of start creating a database of styles that you like and things that you've done in the past, uh, you can bring those in real easy. So the other thing you can do if you end up creating a whole bunch of different styles in here is uh, with your in model styles or if you have these in a folder or a different group or whatever, you can come in here and click save collection as. That'll save your whole collection in here just like that so you can save multiple styles after you've created them but anyway let's go ahead and uh, just dive into this thing uh, the first one of these that I want to talk about well let's talk about one more thing so every time you click on one of these styles what it's gonna do is it's going to add those to your in model like this so that's basically gonna that's gonna add every single style that you've used to your in model and um, so when it does that, you can see it's picking up that all these styles have been used in the model, but you're not actually using any of them. And uh, so sometimes what you want to do, if you've kind of clicked through and tried a whole bunch of these to figure out the way that you like it, um, you can you can go in here and you can click this Purge Unused option. What that's going to do is that's going to get rid of the styles that you're not using. So sometimes if you're going through and you've just got a whole bunch of stuff in here, it gets kind of hard to pick out the style that you want. So just come in here in your in-model 
drop down here and just click purge unused and that'll get rid of the ones that you're not using and it makes it real easy to pick this stuff out so let's go ahead and get started editing our style so to edit your style what you're gonna do is you're gonna select your style and then you're gonna click this edit tab right here when you click this edit tab there's gonna be these five different boxes and these five different boxes are where you uh, edit your different your different stuff in your model. So you edit your edges, your face settings, your background settings, your watermark settings, and then your modeling settings. And so that's where all the settings and visibilities are found in your model. We're going to focus specifically on the edges for this tutorial. So when you edit your edges, uh, SketchUp is a face modeler, meaning that uh, it basically what it models is it models lines and then it models faces between the lines. Um, so it, when you double click on this rectangle right here you can see it selects the face and it also selects all the lines that go around the perimeter well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit the way those lines look and so the way that you're gonna do that is you're gonna use these different options so they all have different check boxes on them meaning you can turn them on and off so really if you want to you can actually come in here and you can turn all of the edges off in a SketchUp model. So as you can see right here with the default model and with these, um, there are no lines showing right now. So you can turn all of those off if you want to. And uh, generally you don't end up doing that. Sometimes you can come in here and you can edit. Um, a lot of the time you'll end up turning things like profiles off and like everything except the edges. So let's just kind of run through these real quick. So the first one that you can turn on and off is the edges themselves. We talked about that a little bit. Now the back edges, so when you turn the back edges on, this is kind of like when you turn x-ray mode on and you can see everything in the background. That's what this back edges does. So if you want to see everything through faces, you can turn on back edges. So the next thing is profiles. And so profiles is basically the outline of a shape in SketchUp. So you can see I've got this whole thing of geometry right here. We'll do what profiles is, is profile is basically if you drew an outline around all of that. So if I turn profiles off, then all the lines stay the same. If I turn it on, then you can see that all the way around this shape and all the way around the default model, the lines are thicker. So you can edit profiles to do that. A lot of the time when you're trying to speed a model up, you turn this off because it is another thing that SketchUp kind of has to render. And I don't have enough geometry in this model for it to be a problem, but in really big models, it can really kind of slow things down. So you can see now, instead of profiles, if you check this depth cue option so if you check depth cue these are going to be that's basically going to emphasize the uh, lines in the foreground instead of the background so you can see what happens if I rotate this down you see how it's thickening all the lines that are in the foreground or in the front of my camera view and then these lines in the background are thin but if I come over here you see how it thickens these lines but not these lines so depth cue is basically showing you the lines that are close or it's thickening the lines that are closer to your camera instead of the ones that are in the background so extension is the next one we're going to talk about so extension what that does is it extends the points of lines beyond the intersection so we're going to use this box as, box as an example when you look at this you can see you can see that what it does is it takes each line and it extends it beyond where those intersect so what it does is it gives it kind of a sketchy feel and you can see it does that for all of the different points where they intersect so all the corners these boxes you've got this extension right here and you can really kinda make those as long as you want the way you kinda you, you can kinda make like a hand drafted look by doing this so it's something that you can kind of adjust in order to um, create a more sketchy hand drafted look kinda like uh, if you were drawing blueprints or something like that so that's extension endpoints is going to be basically all that's doing is it's just extending or it's thickening the endpoint of each line. So and what that really works well for generally is this this one works a little bit better when you're actually modeling because you can actually see where lines end. So when you start getting in there you get a ton of geometry. You can see okay this line ends here, this line ends here. You can kind of see where where everything kind of ends off so to, to me this is more of a functional 
piece than a view piece. You know, I prefer going with more extensions if I'm going to do something like that. So, and then the other thing that we're going to talk about a little bit is jitter. Basically, what jitter is, is jitter uh, renders your line kind of off a little bit. So if you take a look at this line right here, like this is a straight line, but you can see that it kind of renders it off just a little bit. And what that does is it creates this kind of like sketchy, hand-drawn looking style. So if I zoom out and I turn jitter off, these are just straight lines. But if I turn it on, you can see how it kind of renders everything like it was drawn by hand a little bit. And then the other thing it does is it also kind of, um, not only does it just render it off a little bit, but it also uh, kind of randomizes uh, what parts of the line are rendered and what parts aren't. So you can see right here this line, even though it's here, from that view it, it doesn't show it as much. And so it just kind of contributes to the hand-drawn feel in your model. So, and what you can start doing um, is you can start putting these two things together in order to really create kind of a sketchy hand-drawn look or you, you can really start using these to make this look however you want. Alright, so then finally there's this little drop down down here at the bottom that says color and basically what this does is it allows you to adjust the color of your lines in your model. So like let's say for example that for whatever reason you didn't want to work with black lines. Well all you do is you could pick this color all same and you could come in here and you could pick a line color. So like let's say you wanted all your lines to be blue in your model. You can come in here and you can do that. You can change the way these different colors look. So you can really come in here and kind of customize this. I, I think some people like working with more red lines because it makes them a little more visible. So you can do different things like that. But there's a couple other options in here. You can do my by material. By material is an interesting one. I actually did not realize you could do this until I was making this tutorial. But you can actually come in here and you can assign colors to lines. So like for example, if you select this by material, you can actually come in here and you can select a couple different lines and you can actually color them with the paint bucket tool. So you can take these lines and paint them blue, take these lines and paint them green. So by selecting and then clicking on those of the material, you, you can actually assign a material to your lines. So the last option is by axis. So you can come in here and when you select like if you start off with these all black and then you come in here and you select by axis, what that's going to do is that's actually going to color your lines up based on the axis that they're drawn along. So your straight up and down lines are going to be blue. Your side to side lines are going to be red or green as long as they're drawn on an axis. But if you come in here and you draw something that isn't on an axis at all like this, then it's not going to have a color associated with it. So this is a real good way to come in here and uh, and basically see if you've drawn your lines on an axis. We've, we've talked in the past about how important it is to draw everything along an axis. This is a great way to check that. So just to make sure that nothing's off by a little bit or that kind of thing. Anyway, once you've made all of these changes, you know, because you're, you're coming in here and you're changing a whole bunch of things, but it hasn't actually finalized all of these things yet. So in order to finalize all those things, you're going to click up here on this, uh, you see how these two arrows show up? You're going to click update style with changes. And when you do that, what that's doing is that's actually saving all the changes that you've made. So now this example or this line example style, you see it kind of updates with all this stuff. Now that's saved and that's what the style is. So now if you come in here and you click back and forth between some of the assorted styles and stuff like that, um, and then you come back here, you can go back to your line style. So now I'm just going to kind of finalize this model. I'm actually going to come in here and pick a couple colors that I like and uh, just kind of adjust some of this stuff. But But basically what you can do now is if you like the way this looks, you can come in here and you can adjust you can come in here and you can adjust your style now that you kind of know the way everything looks you can come in here and adjust it the way that you like it so it's kind of a fun trial and error process to just come in here and just change things until you kind of get what you want so you know you can change your jitter if you want you can turn your endpoints on or off you can turn profiles off so if you're looking for kind of a hand sketch type style this is kind of a good way to do that you can I wouldn't necessarily show my back edges on this one because I'm just going for that hand sketch style but basically you can come in here and you can use this to really make everything look the way that you want and uh, 
I mean, generally speaking, to me, it feels like the thinner your lines are, the more uh, uh, the more solid they are as opposed to kind of hand-drawn. So it feels like once you start adding a little bit of, if you want more of a hand-drawn type thing, you can go with jitter, you can add some extensions, stuff like that, you can adjust your profiles, that kind of thing. But it's just a real easy way to kind of change the way that things look um, in order to add some interest uh, just to make your model look a little more interesting, make it look a little more hand-drawn, a little more sketchy. It's great for presentations and stuff like that. So that's actually where I'm going to end today's video. Um, in the next Styles video, we're going to talk a little bit more about adjusting the way materials show up in your model. So if you like this video, please remember to click that Like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that Subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. Uh, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider backing me on Patreon. A lot of the plugins and extensions that I teach you to use on this channel aren't free, and uh, every little bit helps. Um, if you like what I do here, please consider pitching in and helping out. Uh, it doesn't need to be a lot, even a dollar helps. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Chris Bannister for pledging his support this week. Chris, thank you very much. You are awesome. Um, as always, if you have any questions or comments about this video, leave them down below. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.